I guess we're going to say um, there seems to be some controversy over whether or not we can say the FBI reopened an investigation because they technically never really closed it. But I think that's kind of like a deflection from the conversation of what's actually going on. I don't care if they reopened it or they just never opened, uh, closed the first one. The point is uh, Anthony Weiner and his dick pics um, seem to have caused the FBI to uh, the, I don't know. I don't, I do know the particulars. I just think it's insane. Here we go again. Hillary Clinton's emails have more lives than Glenn on the walking dead. They will not go away. They're here. And I think it's actually going to get some traction. So I'm going to defer. Let me, let me toss the ball over here to the crew that's here, uh, discussing the show with me. Um, let's, let's see, Brandon, Brandon, what do you think about these emails? What do you think about the substance of, uh, not even just the emails, but the FBI director Comey, everything involved, go ahead and tell me what you think. Well, I think you make a really good point. So at first we were told by Comey that there was nothing to see here. That mm -hmm. if the, even if the investigation ever closed, we were definitely told by, by him, nothing to see here. And now we've been retold, oh wait, actually there is something to see here. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. we don't know what that exactly is there to see from my understanding this is something unrelated to the clinton's general corruption which is what the original right, to do with anthony weiner's well weiner picks for <laughs> lack of a better word yep so and of course because huma abedin as we know is a uh, aide to hillary clinton and has been for a very long time right so i don't know i i, I having, i'm having a hard time honestly getting my head around this one i'm having a very hard time understanding why he would feel the need to come out and say something like this. He's been getting a lot of pushback from all sides. So I just, I can't understand what his angle is. Maybe you guys can help me really. I know I'm not supposed to be an expert on this. But <laughs> well, I'll give you guys the, I'll, I'll give you the rundown here. Right. So I have the basics of it, but I'm like you, I'm really trying to wrap my head around the reason. Like what's the reason why uh, at this point. Um, so director Comey sent a letter to Congress. Um, Jason Chaffetz uh, was so excited to get the damn letter. And he like, he released it. Like it was like a fucking verdict. Like you ever seen um, the jury render the verdict and everybody's just all in suspense. And they, and then at the end they say not guilty. Uh, so he said case reopened. I'm like, Jason, go sit your corny ass down. But anyway, here are the facts of what happened. Um, Director Comey sent a letter to Congress notifying them that the FBI would be examining newly found documents relating to the previous Clinton email investigation. These emails were on the laptop of Anthony Weiner uh, and professional full time headache Anthony Weiner, um, but they belong to his wife, Huma Abedin. So because these emails, we don't even really know what the what's in the content of the emails. We just know that there are some emails that landed on um, uh, Wiener's computer that are in question at this point. Uh, justice officials have said that before Comey notified Congress, they warned him that doing so would go against the longstanding practices of the department not to comment on ongoing investigations and not to take steps that could be viewed as influencing an election. All right, so that's kind of the long and short of it. Uh, Noah, what's your take? That's my take. Um, I find it fascinating that all of a sudden we're very disturbed or distraught with what uh, Comey is doing. Mm -hmm. There's a really great piece today um, by uh, Trevor Tim in The Guardian, basically laying out how he's been this, you know, Democrat darling um, since Obama mm -hmm. appointed him. And he's an Obama appointee. Everyone accusing him of colluding with Republicans. Mm -hmm. like, like, he's an Obama appointee. Obama, you know, decided to carry him along from the Bush administration. And, 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 and this just, it's not just both, it's not that it's both sides are, are, are kind of getting on his case. It's one side because all the Bush people, all these people who are coming out against him have endorsed Hillary Clinton. They're all one team, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so fascinating to have Bush's chief ethics lawyer um, coming down on him. I, I, I think Bush and ethics are like <laughs> an oxymoron. Like it's hilarious. Now, I, now my issue is the fact that like, like Brandon was saying, he kind of was like, well, there's no big deal, you know, right. and how it, the, the, the outrage from people like Senator Chuck Schumer and others within Hillary's Hillary's um, crew. It's like, you know, she was cleared of any wrongdoing. She was not cleared right. of wrongdoing. What he said was what she did was wrong. She did probably violate the law, but we're not going to pursue charges because nobody would actually pursue charges against her. But if she was anybody else, she would be you know, charge. Yeah. And that's a problem. That's mm -hmm. the special treatment right there. 
what's happening right now is a cluster brick, you know, mm -hmm. because of what he did earlier. And, and I think this whole thing about Weeder and whether or not and I, there's a piece, I think in either Slate, I think it was Slate had a piece earlier today about whether or not those emails were actually retrieved legally because the warrant was not for those emails. Uh, but it's like if you people actually did your research, you would see that the FBI had been fighting to get a warrant. So it's possible that what he did was breaking with tradition, but from what was also said was that the DOJ was blocking his ability to get a warrant for those emails. So it's possible that he did this because he wanted to force the hand to get mm. the warrant, which they now have for those emails that they couldn't actually go through before because it wasn't a part of the original purview of the investigation. Bottom but, line is Huma needs to be fired. <laughs> I don't think, well, I don't think Huma needs to be fired, right? I'm, no, she does. She I, really I, actually I, does because she's sloppy. Because Anthony, Anthony, she, her, her bottom rung husband. He is, <laughs> are he is a gutter empire. feeder. He is the, she needs to yeah. go. He is a bottom dweller. He's a uh 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 he, he's, he's a basement dweller. He's a he's he's the worst man. He's just, he's but I don't want to see. I personally he, don't put Wiener on the same level as us Bernie supporters. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you've been basement too. <laughs> he's too old to be taking dick pictures. Like I'm gonna put that out there. He's too old for dick pics. He is what fifty. I don't know how I, old he is. I, I, the but allegation, the allegation that some of Team Clinton also knew that he had a predilection for young girls really actually bothers me more than any of this stuff like if that rumor is true well, let me ask you this been saying that really actually bothers me as a mother of a teenage daughter well how Come young on. is how young is young because there's young that's inappropriate and there's young that's illegal like how young are we talking about well young under 18 is is inappropriate and it's illegal yeah i mean well no i'm saying i don't know i don't know like the accusation is a 15 year old like, oh, I, I, so I didn't I know that. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Like this current sexting, why this is an, even an investigation is That's the fact right. that he was allegedly yeah. sexting with a 15 year old. You know what? Now, I was not. I completely missed that one. I knew he was no. under investigation, but I forgot. I got a 15 year old. I it, wish I wish the dude would. I, I would forgot that it was allegedly with a 15 year old. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's what I meant to be clear to the audience. That's what I meant by like how young is young, because I didn't really know if we're talking about 18. 1920 which is completely inappropriate no we're talking about an age that's illegal oh my god <laughs> like huma well, I mean, so i don't think i wanted to say this to be fair i don't think huma should be fired over her husband i think huma should leave she, like she should have left him a long time ago and leave him now i think no, hillary he be fired for having those emails on a computer that he had access to um, that's why she should be fired. Uh, I'm still gonna. I'm gonna go to bat. For, I'm gonna go to bat for Huma because not because I think she's anything special. She's probably complicit in a, in a lot of Hillary's shenanigans. But I just I'm not with a spouse <laughs> having to pay the price for their husband or their or their wife. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon. I just want to jump in here with a few things. First, isn't it just so poetic that <laughs> Hillary Clinton is being dragged through another scandal due to another husband and wife infidelity thing? Uh, like, isn't that just like poetic? I mean, obviously it's a coincidence. Or yeah. well, maybe that's just, you know, standard in those circles that they run within. But it's a little bit poetic. Uh, two, I think that if we're talking about diverging from precedent, which is what FBI Director Comey is doing here, mm -hmm. he already did that earlier. Yeah, he did. He already diverged from precedent when he came out and said, well, I'm sorry, quote, unquote, this is not the direct quote, but what he said almost, um, this was unprecedentedly reckless, but not yeah. technically illegal. That was a divergence from protocol. And so this is just another continuation of that. People didn't have a problem with him diverging from protocol at this to this degree when yeah. it was in yeah. favor of her. Yeah. And three... I'm only 25 years old, and I wouldn't date a 21 year old because that's inappropriate. <laughs> well, uh, hold on, hold on. But you're at least 25... she can buy a drink. Hang so on, hang on. Get you're, a drink, let's though. let's get some qualifications here. You're 25, and you wouldn't date a 21 year old because I at, at one point taught college classes, so I've had 21 year old students before. Okay, and I I just can't I can't get over that. <laughs> listen, I can't get over that hump. Listen, I'm gonna listen. I'll be the bad guy here. 21 year old, like 18, 19, 20. That's kind of like that's really sketchy. That no matter like if you're 30 yeah. or plus, that's really sketchy. Like 21, I might agree with you. 25 though, 20, 23, 24, 25. That's fair. Listen, I was I was 26, and I was Bandit dating. I was I was messing with oh, a, a, a lady who was. 40 she was 17 years older than me um matter of fact 
it, when I was in my when I was in my twenties, I always dated a woman who was a minimum of eight years older than me to seventeen years older than me because that was in that good spot. That was in that good age group. That good, you know, when women in that age group. It was the we had a really great time back in those days. But I don't see anything wrong with the age gap. I think once you go to a certain threshold, you begin to take advantage of people who are not into, um, uh, mentally as mature or have as much many experiences, and you kind of take advantage of it from that point. But just, just to, I don't have a, a threshold to just say no. This person is too young when you're, especially when you're 25, Brandon. I mean, I think the. Well, well, go ahead. What if I push back to that? And I, what I will say is that the generation gaps and the ability to communicate between people different ages has gotten much smaller. Yeah. With the with the advent of technology. So what people have to remember is that when I was in college, Twitter didn't exist. I mean, Twitter didn't really exist until I was almost out of college. Uh, Tumblr <laughs> wasn't really a, Tumblr wasn't really a thing. Uh, Snapchat wasn't a thing. Are you... Instagram wasn't a thing. Hang on, Brandon. Now... Hang like, on, did Brandon. Did you graduate from college early? I hate to wait. <laughs> let me. I hate to cut you off. Uh, no, are you laughing? I'm laughing at um at the chat room. Alex Alexander Chang said, "Now we know why Ben is voting for Jill Stein because he likes older women." <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk about let's, no, let's I just looked at the chat room now. I was laughing at Brandon talking about how Twitter wasn't really a thing when he was in college. Dude, we had no Kia phones when I was in college with no right. cameras on. Listen, them. go to Geo Cities. If old. you if you Google Geo Cities, that's when I got on the internet when Geo Cities was a thing. Uh, Black I, Planet was Black a Planet. Thing. Oh God. Okay, let's let's finish talking okay, about here, here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing about the emails, right? So every time we get together, it's like we all been drinking, even though we haven't. Um, the emails, I, I love the hypocrisy. I love when hypocrisy is exposed because the Ooh. same people who are like so in love or who were so in love with Comey after he let Hillary Clinton off the hook the first time, they are the yeah. same people melting down right now in a tizzy. And I'm like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You liked it when he bent the rules for you back in July because anybody who was listening to his presentation originally realized Hillary Clinton should have been indicted. Like the first 14 minutes of that 15 minute presentation, your mouth had to drop and be like, oh my God. H.A. Goodman was right, <laughs> you know, and then the last 60 seconds, he flipped the script and didn't press any charges or didn't recommend any charges. So everybody yeah. was in love with them then. And now all of a sudden he's a freaking Russian spy. Like, you know, I just love seeing this hypocrisy being exposed. Go ahead. I'm just trying to figure out this whole logic of calling him a Russian spy. Right. But again, he's an Obama appointee. President Obama vetted him. He selected him. He chose him unless he's somebody that the Hillary people who infiltrated his campaign insisted he get. I mean, I just don't really understand. He's someone that the former, the Bush, not the old one, the one yeah. right before Obama, trusted, right, when he was at the NSA and stuff. Like these people who she supposedly holds up respect so much trusted this man. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's really a Russian spy. Like, are you people listening to yourselves? Like, what world do we live in right now? Right. It's it's, and even if he is a Russian spy, like even if he is a Russian spy, if this information though is legit and it's factual, right? The fact that he's a Russian spy does not negate the truthfulness of the information. Those are two separate things. Not saying that he is a Russian spy because I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, but, and I, uh, you know. yeah, go ahead, go can ahead, I Brandon. Real quick. Do you know how crazy this we sound now? How crazy things have gotten? I just want to take a step back and say that we are actively questioning whether the head of the FBI, and let's be honest, at least I would say 20 other people all over the media are actually agents of the Kremlin in 2016. Yeah. This is crazy. We have gone, this is, we have, we have. Yeah, we've gone, gone to La La Land, we man. Uh, I will say, I mean, everybody, to speak to hypocrisy, everyone's in favor of vigilante justice until you're the one getting your head exactly. caved by Batman. Everyone's in favor of hacking until you're the one being hacked. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, that's just the way people are. Like, everyone, like, everyone's a big fan of Spider-Man swinging through the city until he's webbing you up against, a, like, a bank wall and it's like, oh, can you believe the government doesn't do anything about this? It's like, yeah. It's like, because... <laughs> it's just, it's just the way people are. And at a certain point, it comes down to, well, if it's, you know, just be a little bit consistent. Have yeah. a little bit of consistency because for people who have been railing against this from the beginning, you seem crazy. Like you seem very, very. You're, it's called special pleading. Yeah. You know, obviously. I like what uh Shane Shane Mora said in the chat room. She said he is a communist. Communist. 
Dudums.